Tastes good, tastes like Big Mac sauce. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, which is tomorrow in my time, but is two weeks ago at least in your time. <laughs> that's right. That's how we do holiday and seasonal episodes after they happen when no one wants to see them. <laughs> but it's true. Tonight, the first step will be to make a drink. And if I had uh, a functioning brain, I would have bought some Irish beer or something to enjoy, which was on my shopping list today. I went to the store, but did I buy it? No. I forgot. Didn't read properly. So I'm gonna just have a vodka seltzer instead. But you know, limes are green just like the Irish. Wait, I didn't tell you what we're making. Tonight we are making corned beef tacos. That's right. I will not, I, I, oh man. So tempting, right, to call them Irish tacos. But uh, apparently Irish people don't eat uh, corned beef. So this is as American as apple pie. You know, just taking shit from all over the world, but actually just taking stuff that Americans eat anyways and pretending like it's from somewhere else and then smashing it together into some new different bullshit. And I, I will acknowledge, and I'm not very happy about this to acknowledge it, that in my research it seems like Andrew Zimmerman did this recently. He made some kind of f***ing corned beef and he put uh, slaw and salsa verde on it. And uh, I don't know how I feel about that guy. In the comments tell me what you think of Andrew Zimmerman. I don't know, I can't judge him. Right, so why are we doing this? Inevitably, but actually maybe not inevitably, maybe probably, you may have had corned beef cabbage tomorrow, but two weeks ago in your time, and you're like, uh, this is kind of, you know, a lot of, kind of a lot of meat, kind of a lot of food, and you know, it's home style food, right? Like it's a meat and potatoes kind of thing, so you're like, oh, I'm a little tired of eating the same thing. So why not put it in a taco? I mean, you, you, this is, you know, like post Thanksgiving, post St. Patrick's Day, Easter. Yeah, oh, Easter's a good one. This is the holiday leftover season in your time. But I, actually, if you had that, that leftover for two weeks, you probably shouldn't eat it at that point. You probably throw it out. So, I cooked the corned beef in a traditional way today for the purpose of using it as leftovers in tonight's show. That's, that's how committed I am to your entertainment. All right, enough jibba jabba. In this bowl that has clearly not been used for another episode, rinse it out. Uh, peel a carrot. Yeah, just do it. We're gonna do some stuff kind of out of order, but it's mainly because I want to have everything ready to go. So we are making a slaw, cabbage slaw. And in my instance, I have half a head of cabbage here. I cooked the other half with that corned beef, but it's a really big head of cabbage. So that's fine. So we'll cut some of this off. We're not gonna make a stupid amount of slaw today because we are wise, that's why. We don't need to do too much. So thinly slice your cabbage if you got it. If you don't, well then probably need to buy some for this recipe. Can't get enough cabbage. I really like cabbage, but I really like cabbage. In an ideal world, we would slawify this, which is not the most fun thing to do with just a knife. You could use a cheese grater or a julienne slicer, but keeping up with my traditions as a cook, I'm just gonna do it the dumbest way possible. But the idea is to get very small pieces of carrot, or maybe just buy those carrot shreds. They're pretty fine for this application. You guys notice I'm wearing green today? That's because uh, it's St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. There's our carrots. We did it. We did it fine. All right, and we will add a little bit of honey. This is a pretty basic slaw. Really, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can go with slaw. And what we are going to do is we're going to do a vinegar-based slaw as opposed to a creamy one because we will be topping these tacos with a creamy sauce. And we might even we might even do two today. So those are some slices of onion we'll throw in there. And using our tiny spatula, we will incorporate these ingredients in this crouton bowl that has clearly not been used before. So to make a quick, a quick marinade for this, I would say salt it right away. When you salt cabbage or any vegetables, it starts to draw water out of it, which is ideal for slaw. And by the way, if you've got like other slaw vegetables or additions, if you wanted this to be more spicy, you could add some like jalapenos. But we're just gonna hit it real quick with a small bit of olive oil. 
Now you need some acid in your slaw marinade. You could use regular white vinegar. If you wanted a citrus twist with your corned beef for some crazy reason, you could use a lime or lemon. Today we're gonna use champagne vinegar, which is my favorite type of vinegar. I like it even more when it's infused with something, like ramps, and it's almost that time of year. Actually, by the time this comes out, it'll probably be that time of year. And that's it, that's it for our slaw. You can add all kinds of other crazy seasonings of your choice, but basically we're just gonna leave this out to marinade. Slaw. There it is, and there it goes. Next thing, we're making Thousand Island, which is a, a dressing named after the Thousand Islands, which are somewhere between America and Canada. It starts with half a cup of mayonnaise, and pretty much the same recipe is like all over the internet, more or less. Woo, Thousand Islands, there it is. Okay, next up, some ketchup. You want about two tablespoons of ketchup, which I'm gonna eyeball here. It's up to you if you wanna mix as you go, but the ketchup and mayo base. This is the base for like a million special sauces in the world, but some of the kind of pinkish, tannish color will come from the mixing of these two sauces. Very exciting stuff. Next up will be sweet relish. I don't like sweet relish. I much prefer dill relish. It's the only thing I can find. And also it's, it's probably more authentic to use sweet relish. This gives it a little bit of Piccolinus, which is just about the most ugly made up word you can think of. I'll, I'll say it again. Piccolinus. Piccolinus. We're gonna add a little bit of sugar because this is a sweet sauce, unfortunately. We will add some horseradish. This is an optional ingredient, but I like a little zip wherever I go. It's a life policy. Get some zip. And we will add some very, very thinly, finely minced onions which I am chopping in the dumbest way possible. You are supposed to add one teaspoon of minced onion. This is clearly more than that. Gee, pop. Mixing as we go. It's starting to look like Thousand Island. It's starting to look like Big Mac sauce. You can add a little bit of salt, but don't go too crazy with the salt because most of the things that you put in there already had salt. A little pep, little pep, little pep, little pep. And if you are a wild and crazy individual, this is one of those recipes that traditionally, very traditionally, says add like th three drops of Tabasco. Oh my God, it's spicy now. Now it's time to add a little vinegar. White vinegar would be the regular way of doing this. Just about a teaspoon, really not too much at all. Uh, that's clearly more, but it's fine. It's totally fine. You can add uh, Worcestershire sire shosh. That's an optional thing, but I think at this point we should at least give it a taste. I'll use the pinky taste. It actually needs more salt. So there's far less salt in the in there than I originally thought. I mean, it's good, but it's it's missing something. Oh no no, flavors are there. Flavors are there. Uh. They say more sugar, but I'm just not willing to do it. Okay, now here is where we get crazy. Get those onions to the side. Actually, I might just put those onions in anyways. If you want to take this to the next level, hard boil an egg. That's right, there's an egg in this sauce. And where does this stem from? It stems from a time where people had far more limited ingredients. And they were like, you know, they were fucking around in the kitchen. They're like, well, what if I just, uh, you know, put an egg in there? That's where this comes from. But I thought it would be fun to mince an egg and put it in there because this is apparently part of the original recipe. So I hard boiled this egg earlier today. You can see that there is just a little bit, just a tiny bit of color tinge on the outside, which means I very slightly overcooked the hard boiled egg but I won't tell if you won't. And you know, if you've got a uh, device, like a slap chop or a food processor, you could certainly do that as well. But the idea is to chop up the egg until it's very fine, just like the other ingredients. Remember that this is a component rather than a, uh, a breakfast food item. It's important to remember. And just one egg kind of looks like a lot for what we're doing, but I am willing for this to be bad. So that's, that seems fine to me. Seems seems great, actually. And I, I, I just want to go ahead and put and more onion because it's there now the like the more kind of bullshit that we put into it like we just did you know the more chunky it's going to get chunky sows chunky. give that give that another taste it's good it's real good i don't really know if the egg really adds that much okay that's our thousand island all right fam it's time to execute on our bullshit so we will start with some flour tortillas because this is an american 
dish. <laughs> in a large skillet, get that heat going. And in a smaller skillet, we will fry up some corned beef. This is corned beef that I simmered in beer today. Narragansett is what I had, Andy. For our purposes, you're really, for a taco, you probably only need one slice of corned beef. But of course, if you want more or less, depends on your life. And this is pretty fatty, so even, you know, it'll probably be better if we uh, wait for it to heat up, but we can also just throw it in there and get it warming up. Maybe John and I can eat at approximately the same time. Kind of a tall ask. I was telling John off camera, but now I'm telling him on camera that like, I've been eating fairly healthy lately. And like, tasting this earlier, this cured fatty beef. Man, I <laughs> had a couple bites and was like, this is like eating Slim Jims. <laughs> it's not the best for you. Now, we are borrowing in part, uh, that's why we got Thousand Island and some other things. We're kind of borrowing some of the ideas from the sphere of Reuben sandwiches. But we're not actually making Reuben sandwiches or Reuben tacos for that matter. But those do traditionally have cheese. A lot of times it's Swiss. I meant to get the Swiss. I missed. So we're using mozzarella cheese. Why, you know, white cheese melted on a taco. All kind of tastes the same to me, so that's what we'll be doing today. We'll let this heat up, we'll let this heat up, and then it'll be Taco Tuesday, the day before St. Patrick's Day. We'll be back. Okay, take your tortillas in the pan. You don't have to throw them from that distance, but it is kind of fun if you can pull it off. Yeah. That doesn't look healthy, you know? Corned beef, it's like they took the meat that's probably the worst for you and made it worse. And uh, you can't even blame Ireland, right? This isn't from Ireland. I don't know, man. I just don't know. I just don't know. And my short tongs for the slaw. It's looking good. Give it a taste. 10 out of 10. Okay, I'm flipping the tortillas. I really just wanted to heat one side because I'm gonna put some cheese there on the other side. And in an ideal world, this cheese will melt. It's not mozzarella. Don't look at the back. Here, let me turn it to the other side so you can't see it's mozzarella. I can't believe it's not mozzarella. Over here, we will carefully use a fork to flip the corned beef or a spatula or your uh, tool of choice. I think spatula might be the way to go. You can see just searing it for a little bit of time gives it a little bit of color. So that pink turns into kind of a rosy pink. Again, not that visually appetizing, I don't think. But that's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine all the time. This is how you cook. I'm cooking. Are you convinced? Check it out, it's melting. It's working. This would be a good time to acknowledge how much bullshit this is that we are made. And yet, we're flexing our creative muscles Kind of, sort of, right? We're kind of making a Reuben taco thingy. And, you know, we're utilizing leftovers. It's fun. We're having fun tonight. Irish tacos. Take that, Ireland. I don't know, the whole country of Ireland's like, no, it's not from here. Not this time. Okay, I'm seeing mostly melty cheese. So here we go. Old tortilla on a taco. Old beef venus on a taco. Put it to one side. Why? Why do you do that? Because it'll be easier to fold the taco. Not that complicated. All right. If you chop up your up your corned beef, it'll be easier to eat. Next up, hit it with some slaw. Those crunchy vegetables with minimal nutritional value, but it'll add a depth of texture. And then we add our sauce, our sauce. And by the way, I got another sauce. I have this horseradish sauce made in a sour cream container. So we're gonna have a depth of flavor. And I tell you what, if you serve that up, Taco Tuesday to all your uninteresting friends, of which I have none, so I don't know what that's like. They probably would be like, hell yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. As they, you know, down six Moscow mules or something. Uh, but here is our corned beef tacos made for your pleasure and entertainment and our sustenance and our flag and our country. <laughs> all right, let's try that Thousand Island, which I did not get the meat on there evenly. So I gotta flip her around. Very Reuben, Reuben-esque flavors in the literal sense of that instead of the, like the paintings. It's really good, man. It tastes like a really good deli sandwich, you know? And it's warm. I love it. This is like, this came out better than I thought it would. Not even, not even trolling. Let's try that other sauce. Woo! Woo! Horseradish. Horseradish. This one tastes like horseradish. I think I like the Thousand Islands a little bit better. It has more complex flavors. But that horseradish tastes like horseradish, which I like. This is fun, and if you're f***ing tired of eating, you know, soggy-ass cabbage, which I know most people never get tired of soggy-ass cabbage, this might be a fun way to, you know, continue to eat your St. Patty's Day leftovers 
that are clearly not expired by now. I will make this again, but it might be like a full replacement for St. Patty's Day. You know, if St. Patty's Day ever falls on a Tuesday, probably making these tacos. So that's how you do it. That's how we did it. And we'll see you next time on PGC. And hey, by the way, you happen to have some croutons, and you happen to have some Thousand Island dressing, you could make one hell of an unhealthy salad. You ever wanted to get gain weight by eating salads? That's how you do it. All right, see you next time. <laughs>